is after living into the power of Christ's righteousness and not righteousness of his own. For Paul tells us over in, collect, over in Galatians 2.17, Paul says, we ourselves have been found to be sinners. Listen here, I'm working this morning because I came to work. The idea purported that revelation of his own character. Paul was long moved beyond the righteousness of the law and was now seeking to live after the righteousness which the Holy Spirit would produce in him because of his faith in Christ. What Paul wants is the personal experience of resurrection power activated in his own life. Paul literally says, I don't want resurrection power later, but I want resurrection power right now. Right now. Ah, you feel me, right? Uh, that power is that will resist his tendency to fall short of his high calling of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Paul is looking to produce those Christian graces that make his life more in alignment with what God has ordained Paul's life to become. His desire thickens in his wanting the joint participation in the sufferings of Christ for righteousness' sake. I know this is a lot for you, but I got to bring it to you. When these four things are true of Paul merely, it is to be discovered by men to be in Christ by the very life he lives. By knowing or coming to know him better all the time, by experiencing the same power that raised Christ up from the dead surging through his own being and by becoming a joint participant in his suffering for righteousness sake and then Paul wants to be made constantly conformable unto his death. I'm working this morning. You don't have to say amen, but I'm going to say amen. Preach Reverend Smith. I'm trying the best by the best I can. The words made conformable merely means to bring to the same form of the other person. Uh, let me slow down because I preach too fast. In the same Greek word, the apostle is using the great kenosis passage in Philippians 2, 5 through 8, meaning it is the verb to give outward expression of one's inter, inner extrinsic nature. Paul's desire was that he might come to know his Lord in the power of his resurrection, operative in his life, and joint participation in his sufferings that he would be brought to the place that he would become both as his inner heart life and his outward expression are the same, like his Lord with respect to death, not merely his physical death, but the death of himself in all things. This is illustrated so vividly in, in Philippians uh, of Christ emptying himself. This self-emptying was the true nature not only of the Lord, but his acts of becoming incarnated and stooping to the death of the cross. This self emptying conditioned his entire earthly life and made it a beautiful life as it was, a death to self, a denying of self for the blessings of other people. Now, Paul is striving for that. Paul says that in order for us to have real power, we have to learn how to undergo the idea of self-emptying ourselves. In other words, in other words, he says, I want to have the spirit, the temper, the meekness, and the lowliness, and the submission of Christ operative in my life. Ah, Paul says the expression, if by any means, if not an expression of doubt, but of humility. It is the modest but assured hope that I might attain that, that Christ has problematically given unto me to do as I wrestle with what's going on on the inside. Paul says, Paul says, my goal is to make sure that you understand that real pursuit of power has nothing to do with what's on the outside first, but it has something to do with what's on the inside immediately. Ah, Paul is assured us in 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter that the resurrection of the body is going to happen. But what Paul has in mind is the spiritual blessing of resurrection to the point that sin does not have dominion in no aspect of his life. Paul's desire is to have the power of the resurrection on the inside of his life that the fragrance of his life catches people's attention, not by his outward transformation, but by his inward transformation. Ha! Ah, the goal that Paul has here is for us to understand 
that in order for us to have real power in life, we must pursue that power that comes only from self-emptying ourselves. Paul says, my posture is for you to understand that I'm not trying to brag about my heritage. He says, when it comes down to being a Hebrew, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews or the tribe of, of Benjamin. He said, when it comes down to knowing the law, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisee. He said, I, I count all that but nothing. Oh my. Do the road. It's called horse fertilizer. I know we're a little conservative. I can't say what it really means, but you do get the point. It's, it's fertilizer. He said, when I add it all up, when I look at my heritage, when I look at my background, when I look at my bloodline, he said, I count all of that fertilizer. Oh my. Something to help something else grow. He said, because it don't mean anything if I still have sin reigning in my life. So, Paul, help us today. Paul says, I got a few things to drop on your brother Smith, and I promise you I'll get out of your way. And I, I said, bring it to me, Paul, because we got to have it this morning. It's hot like a hot potato, and everybody is always concerned about power. Come on, come on. And Paul says, if you really want to have power, listen here. Real power is based upon how open we are admitting to where we are in our Christian walk as believers. If you're going to be honest with yourself, first of all, you're going to have to have some self-awareness. The conscious knowledge of your own character, feelings, motives, and desires. If you have some self-awareness, it will keep you from pointing fingers at everybody else's failures because you're too busy hoping God don't expose yours. Not only is it self-awareness, but it's self actualization the realization of your own talents and potentialities when you examine yourself you put yourself in the position of examining your own talents and potentialities i'm trying to help somebody here to understand you're sitting on some gifts and some talents that you should have activated 20 years ago i don't know who i'm talking to because I ain't called nobody. I ain't had no interviews. I know you tired. I gave you the gift. If God gave you the talent, it is not up to you to decide when to use it. It is up to God to decide when he's done using you. Excuse me. I come to work this morning. Self-awareness, self-actualization, self-examination uh, means that you pay attention and scrutinize your own behaviors and motivations. Why are you doing what you're doing and why are you doing it only to see if somebody else is gonna recognize what you do? When you examine your own motivations, nobody has to pump you, nobody has to push you, nobody has to pride you. You do what is supposed to be done because you're doing it for the Lord's glory and not for the people's applause. True power comes self-actualization, self-examination, and self-awareness. Then Paul says, true power is demonstrated in how much willingness we have in dying to ourselves, dying to our wants, dying to our ambitions, and dying to our own desires. Paul says, in order for you to do this, you have to learn how to submit or surrender to the authority of Christ. When you're stepping on people's toes, it get quiet. Surrendering means Jesus, oh, here it is. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Drop to the end. It ain't in the notes. Uh, you know that sticker, what would Jesus do? That we always, that we saw, and then it came as a fad, and then it left. It never went out of fashion. The question is, what are you willing to submit to the authority of Christ in your life? Huh? Not only is it submission or surrendering, but it's also sacrificing. What are you willing to give up that is so important of value of yourself for the sake of other people? Jesus told you and I to carry our own cross. Why is it that we can wear our own cross but not bear our own cross? There's a difference between wearing the cross around your neck and bearing the cross that is yours to carry. 
Ah, ah. Surrendering, sacrificing, and listen to this, submitting means yielding to the sovereignty of God by faith in Jesus Christ. How many of us, if we took a poll this morning online and in the sanctuary, can admit that we have yielded our lives to the sovereignty of God in Jesus Christ? Submitting means you do it regardless of how you feel. Submitting also means that you don't do it for people to give you accolades. You do it because God has laid the burden and the responsibility upon your life and you don't want to disappoint God. When you submit and yield to the sovereignty of God, it is no longer my agenda, but your will, not my will be done, but your will be done, Lord, in my life. Said, True power, real power. Then he says authentic power comes as we submit our total life to seeing our lives considering Christ Jesus. In other words, in other words, we change our priorities to seek the approval of Christ before we get it done. Uh, uh, is your priorities you or what the Lord wants? Where is God on your schedule every day? How often do you ask God for his approval on the stuff that you do? Is God the first thing on your mind every day? Or the last thing on your mind every night? I know, I know it sounds a little old school, but uh, that we used to sing a song, I woke up this morning with my mind. Stay on Jesus. I'm walking and talking with my mind. Stay on Jesus. Ooh, ooh, yeah. I mean, back then, we were singing and praying with my mind. I, I grew up around those Pentecostal apostolic folks. And uh, I, I'm Baptist. I got some Pentecostal and some Apostolic and some Lutheran and some Methodist, but I'm Baptist for sure. And I'm, I grew up around the Baptist before there was even a full gospel even talking about my pastor, uh, my father in the ministry, Dr. William H. Murphy Sr., now Bishop William H. Murphy Sr., told us, he said, son, learn how to make melody in your heart unto the Lord all day long and it does not matter what happens to you in that day you will still have joy yeah, yeah. I mean I mean I, 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 I remember I remember when you didn't have to ask deacons to do devotion they would be arguing over who gonna sing <laughs> they would be they would be wrestling with it, brother Smith trying to figure out who gonna do this who, who was gonna participate because they came to church ready to serve they came with a mind to serve, and that's no reflection on our deacons. I'm not trying to point any fingers, but we need to have that kind of energy that folk, that you don't have to call me and ask me, am I going to do devotion? I'm already ready. I'm already ready. I already got my song. Even though I might be off key, it might not sound good to you, but I got a song in my heart, and, I gotta, and I'm going to sing it the best way I can. When, 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 when Christ is the priority you come ready for church yeah. not only that not only that and not only that he says he says he says authentic power comes when when we understand the principles of christ and learning how to be liberating in our love ethic of christ let me tell you something the true expression of your really saved is based upon how well other people can get along with your difficult self Jesus loved us enough to die, and all he asked for us to do is love one another. The hardest thing to do is love a Christian that don't want to be, that don't want to act right. Oh <sighs> I'm going to get in trouble, but I am the pastor. This is my job. Thank you, Brother Bethea. This is the rough part. Uh, 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 we go have to learn. That God is not impressed on our perfect attendance. God is more impressed with our perfect love. 
knowing that we are difficult to deal with ourselves. God is more concerned of our heart issues and not necessarily our habitual habits. Uh, I once knew a man who had perfect attendance on Sunday, but believed he was going to miss heaven and go straight to hell because he knew his heart wasn't right. And his problem was, is that he had grown to the point that church got on his nerves. But he showed up every Sunday because he thought perfect attendance would put him in right stand. And he heard a message one morning that helped him to realize that if my heart is not right, it does not matter what my actions might say. Because God is not concerned about how great you are on Sunday morning. He's concerned about how loving you are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday night, and Sunday morning. 